So welcome to this workshop, third of the day. Um, today we're talking about CubeMX and expansion pack integration. So it's a new feature added into CubeMX. So the agenda for today, I'll bring it all up. Um, I'm going to start with me doing a bit of introduction about what the workshop's about, uh, what we're going to go through, um, and a few objectives. Then we're going to go to the hands-on sessions, which Jeff will be leading, and I'll be around the room helping out where, where we need to. Um, so we'll go through the um, XQ pack, as we call it, and um, installing, configuring it, and doing the building and testing of the software to make sure it's all working. So the objectives for today, or, or for this session. To be familiar with the structure of the XQ pack. To understand... Um, how to add it into CubeMX. So take CubeMX and add in this new package of software, a pack as we call it. Then once you've included it in CubeMX is how to get that software enabled into your project or your customer's project. So how to use it and how to configure it. One of the, the new features is being able to configure this additional software. Uh, so you can make changes, uh, customize it to how it's required to be used. And then finally, how to build it and debug it and make sure that it's all working. So in terms of the ecosystem, as, as we call it for um, STM32, uh, CubeMX is the first building block of... I was going to try and use this, but I have to use this pointer because it, this doesn't work on the uh, screen. Um, so CubeMX is the first stage in the development lifecycle. Um, it's there to save you going through hundreds and hundreds of pages of data sheets trying to work out how to configure the alternate functions of the PIOs, how to configure the PLLs for the clocks. It saves you all that manual going through the pages. I mean, not that the data sheets aren't useful as well in, you know, alongside it, but as a rapid startup tool, this is the way to go. So very quickly, you can graphically configure your STM32 and away it goes. That configures the startup code and generates the C code, along with a framework for putting your application in. The next step is to compile the code and debug the code. So that's where the IDEs come in. Um, we work with all the major um, Cortex-M tools providers. Um, the ones highlighted in green there are, are actually free solutions. Some of the others are paid for. And the, the Kai one there is, is highlighted as green because for the L0 that we're using today, and for the F0 family, so the Cortex M0 and M0 pluses, there is actually a free license for that. Today we're going to use the Atolic tool chain, which as you may know, ST bought towards the end of last year. So we're, we're promoting that, that tool chain or that IDE. And then finally, the final step in the uh, development software tools anyway, is STM Studio for monitoring the, uh, the device and seeing how it uh, is performing. So CubeMX was launched in 2013, so it's been around for 2013 in, and, and gradually we've been adding more and more features and developing it. Um, in terms of the ecosystem and where CubeMX fits in, well, first of all, we have to think about what it's for. So you have the hardware, so that's the, the boards like this one or your customer's board with the STM32 on it. So whether it's a nuclear board, discovery board or a customer board, we have the hardware. Then software-wise, we have the STM32 Cube packages. So those of you that played around with CubeMX before will know about adding in, say, the, live, the firmware pack for the different families. So the L0 family, the F4 family, etc. That's what the Cube MCU packages are. That's what we term those are. And then the next step, obviously, you have the hardware with the STM32 on it, but you need it to do something. So you might add... Um, a shield on an expansion board on with some MEMS or um, connectivity or a display, something like that. So we've got expansion boards. And to use those expansion boards, you need software. So we have Cube expansion packages, and these are the packages that I was asking about at the start. So the Xcube MEMS package, for instance, is a package of software that that's for the STM32 that allows you to control those particular peripherals. But they're not necessarily, until today, 
those two weren't necessarily integrated together. So you could get the pack package and you could build it for the STM32 and that it all worked fine. But you couldn't configure it within Cubamex like you could configure the STM32. So it was, it was kind of two separate operations. So we've moved on for the next step. And now we have the Cube expansion packs. Um, put CMSYS in there because it's a standard. It's the ARM Kyle standard for CMSYS. Uh, CMSYS. So it's for the packs. So if any of you have used Kyle, as the ID, anybody use Kyle as the ID, an ID, the MDK? Yeah. So when you add s packages within Kyle in the package manager, that uses the pack format. And that we're using the same pack format here within Cubamex. So what we have today is BLE. That's the only pack that exists now that is compatible with Cubamex. We're working on others. So currently, that we have projects going on for MEMS and for LoRa. So they will be the next things in Q4. We'll be adding those packs as well. So you'll be able to introduce those into Cubamex. So what is this pack format that I've talked about, I've mentioned? Well, as I say, it's an ARM standard. It's the ARM CM SIS standard for packs. And what it is, is imagine you have an embedded software component. You've got some software, or your customer's got some software, or a supplier like ST has some software for an additional product that they want to include within Cubamex. So you have this lump of software. ARM Kyle de defines this pack format for putting together along with so additional source files, which may be for examples for using that code. So this would be the API code and the drivers, and this, the existing source files may be the application examples. There's also a PDSC, which is the package description. And that, that tells um, the tool what's in that pack, what the software dependencies are between packs, uh, what it requires. And you'll see some of the dependencies appear when we go through the hands-on. Then in addition to that, ST, to make it CubeMX compliant, has added in some additional files sort of outside of the CMSYS pack. So a couple of XML files and a, a, what we call an FTL file. These are the descriptive files that tell CubeMX what you can and can't configure and what the parameters are for that configuration within the pack. For the workshop today, I mean, most of you have already got them out. We're using the Nucleo LO53 board. We're using the Blue NRG Shield, our expansion board, and the mini USB cable. That's the hardware. Software, obviously, we're using Cubamex. That's the workshop that we're, we're here to do. So we're going to use Cubamex as the configuration tool. We're going to get that to generate the software. Then we're going to use the Atolic IDE in order to do the compilation and debugging. The third component, which we've added on here, is STM32 Cube Programmer. You can use this, or you can use ST Link Utility if you already have that. It doesn't really matter. We aren't using this piece of software as it is. All we've installed this for is to get the USB drivers that it installs as well to connect to the board. And then the final piece of the jigsaw is you've got Bluetooth running on your boards. You need to talk to it to see whether it's working or not. So we have an app that runs on your, on your smartphone. And we've got a version for iOS and Android that you can install. So if you haven't already got it um, from the slides sheets that are on the desk, you've got the QR code and you can uh, download it. 